So you want to learn how to drive, but you don't have a car. So you get a bike instead, fall down, scrape your knee, go to the emergency room, meet a lovely lady named Sally, and have a lovely life together. Married, 26 different kids. Congratulations. Hey guys, I'm Matt, that's my Kai, I'm Kai, and today we're back once again, taking a look at how to make this cool, cool, cool uh, tune shader um, that, I've, that, I, that I've come up with here today. Now, here's the thing, I was scouring YouTubes for some great videos, some fun videos to watch, and I came across a video, this video here, I put it up on the screen, um, called Simple Water Shader in Blender. It's by a creator named Blue Walk, and this is the shader that they made in the video. It's a slight difference, I added a couple things, and I'll show you what I did here in a second. But I wanted to highlight this video today because, and this channel in general, because this channel has a thousand and nineteen point a thousand point nineteen subscribers, and the video at the time that I'm making this one has only 87 views. I thought this shader was absolutely beautiful. So today I went ahead and I recreated the shader and I added a bunch of things to it. So I wanted to uh, showcase, showcase this off, excuse me, showcase this off. So if you do have the time, I'll put the link down in the description to the this creator's channel. Please go and check this creator out. Uh, they're making some really cool hand painted textures with houses and like cool, just really cool stuff. So go there, support another smaller creator um, and, and do your thing. You know what I mean? Um, all these textures and all these nodes and everything will be uh, super easy to add if you go ahead and hit the um, shift a button on your keyboard you can go ahead and just search and search every single one of them so you can just search up texture coordinate um uh, right there boom and then plop that right down now i have uh two mapping nodes this is all from the video itself so i'll kind of speed through this a little bit go watch the uh original video of course um but you can see i have uh two mapping nodes so just again shift a search mapping boom i have the y value on the upper mapping node set to 90 um, uh, just to rotate some things, which is nice. And then we have two Voronoi textures, which again is just any, all of these is just shift a search and then, um, Voronoi. So boom, right there. You got that. Now the first texture is set, um, to, uh, uh all default values. So 3d F1, all this stuff is just normal. Uh, make sure you uncheck normalize because sometimes normalize is checked on accident and if it is it looks like that instead which looks still really cool but it, it loses all of the like texture that we're adding to it so make sure you uncheck normalize the scale set to 2.5 the detail zero the roughness 0.5 and then everything else is default value which is zero and one i do believe now on the second one the second veronoi just hit shift d so select the one verona texture hit shift d to duplicate that and just put it down here you have to and i repeat you have to change this from f1 to smooth f1 if it is not on smooth f1 it looks like this it does not look as cool like i said it still looks pretty cool but not you know what, what we're really going for this looks actually really nice for the regular water so if you want to do that just literally do that and keep it that way but if you want that nice kind of tune shader water looking esque idea then boom go ahead plop that bad boy down right there we move on over here and check uh, and hook this this vector map uh, mapping node up into the gradient texture which of course we're gonna go ahead and add all these now which is a um, shift a search gradient texture boom there you go for that one um, then a for the subtract node the subtract node is weird because it's not actually subtract it's math so shift a search math i know a lot of people get confused about that and then we go ahead and just change the drop down from add to subtract and boom you have the subtract node so i want to be clear about that just so no one's confused um and then we're going to hook the subtract node up into a color ramp which is again shift a search color ramp boom and finally we have the mix node which is of course shift a search mix and then you have the oh, mix color sorry that's also something that can get kind of confusing mix color there we go with this i didn't really change anything you could probably try different values here but maybe maybe multiply some oh wait it looks kind of nice wait okay i'm not gonna lie i kind of like this more than leaving it normal because if you look if you look here if, if you look at the bottom take a look take a look at the bottom down here down the darker colors you can see it kind of it kind of uh gliding and gradienting inwards um on mix it doesn't do that you see the difference how cool is that okay wait we're gonna actually make some changes here live on air um we're gonna go ahead and and, and put that on multiply now with this one we low-key might do this with this as well multiply hold on wait give me a second now i'm, I'm coming across a real oh <clears throat> yeah this is um this is like the legend of zelda wind waker water we don't we don't want that we don't want that we're gonna hook this up into um three new nodes which is gonna be another mix node so just go ahead and grab this one shift d 
and then put it down over here make sure you change it back to um mix we don't want this one this one, we don't want it uh, i can't speak we don't want this one on multiply we want it on mix um and then we'll go ahead and grab the color ramp shift d duplicate that and then put it over here but instead of having black and white we'll make sure these are all the way to the right and left and we'll change this to a nice blue color the hex for this blue color is 002e6f which is really cool and then the uh hex value for the one all the way on the right is 1dffd5 um now you can change these colors to anything you want of course you can have a little bit more of a bluer color here a little bit more of a light blue a little bit of a whiter color maybe you want like a greener color maybe you want like a uh, swampy you know, maybe you want like swamp colors or something like that, you know, um, very many colors look cool here. You can probably get like a, a, a lava looking effect as well. If you, if you push this to some weird colors here, that might be kind of, uh, it might be kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, that looks really nice. You can do like maybe even magic. You can make like a magic, um, a magic texture, which would be really cool. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Take a look at that. That's really nice. Oh yeah. Okay. But, um, but for now, we will, of course, leave it as the blue water that we had before. Once again, shift a search and then just type in principal BSDF. It's right there. Um, and we're going to hook the color into the base color and also into the emission color. So open up emission here, open that up and then plug the color into the color of the emission. And then make sure that's on one because it's on zero. It looks like this doesn't look as cool. Make sure it's on at least one. You can go higher. You can go to two, maybe even five. Five is kind of bright, but I recommend doing one. One, one is a really nice base value to have that on. Um, so yeah, there we go. After that, that just hooks straight up into the surface of the material output. And then the final piece that we have, which really, really sets this entire thing off because without it, it would look like that, which again, don't get me wrong, looks great still. looks really, really cool, but it could look a lot, lot better. Now this, all this stuff up here is all stuff that I added that was brand new. Um, I played around with some of the values down here, of course, from the original video, like I said, from Blue Walk. Um, but this is all brand new stuff that I've added that I really wanted to um, extend the texture into. There's two pieces to this. The, this, this. These two down here are actually technically separate from these three up here. But I put them on the texture category because um, they just all are texture. So the first thing we do here, um, I'm going to unhook that and we'll do the ambient inclusion first. So I really wanted to make a nice way to have the edges be highlighted. As you can see here, all the edges are highlighted. If you go around and take a look at this, um, all the edges have a nice little white trim on them, which looks really, really cool. And I wanted to figure out how to do that. And the easiest way is to use the ambient inclusion and a color ramp node. So go ahead and shift a search um, and then ambient occlusion boom plug that into a color ramp node we have two of those already again shift a search color ramp um and then invert the color so make the one on the left white and make the one on the right black um now what this is going to do is if i go ahead and play around with this you can see that the white here gets softer or uh bigger or sorry a har harsher or, or, or smaller you know um as i move it around here which is very very cool and then the very important thing you need to make sure you do here is make sure you check inside if you don't check inside it will look like this it will just be the ambient occlusion of the entire object instead of only the inside of the object it'll be doing the outside of it instead of the inside so that really makes that edge pop because without it it looks nice it looks really good but it looks even better with that edge there all right so we have these three up here which is again a texture coordinate node which we have over here so you can just grab oops, so you can just grab that node and just hit sh click it and just hit shift D duplicate that left click to pl place it down. Um, and then we have another mapping texture, which again, we have uh, again, just shift D left click to put it down and then up here. And then we have a noise texture, which we do not have anywhere else. So just shift a search um, noise texture. Boom. Plop that down right there. So the um, generated goes into the vector of the mapping and the vector of the mapping goes into the vector of the noise texture there we go super easy to follow super crazy cool i have all my scale set to 3.6 um and if you can't see i'll, I'll kind of move around a little bit you can kind of see the the pieces that are moving um it's just like a little overlay to give it a nice darker lighter aspect to it it looks like it has a bit of depth to it which looks really nice so um that's that's basically what that is the, the detail doesn't do too much but uh, i do have that on uh, 5.2 as well i think you might be able to get away with just doing zero i'm not sure i think you leave it on zero yeah um i think you leave everything on zero yeah everything on zero except for the scale 3.6 um and then this color of the noise plugs into the factor of the mix over here next to this this color and then that goes all into that so that's basically all done now two things you want to keep in mind 
the Voronoi texture down here in the base value section. The scales have to be set to the same thing. If they're not, it will look like this. It will look a little strange. Um, it won't look the way that it should. So um, it will it'll look uh, it'll look a little a little weird, a little strange. So they have to be set to the same value. It can be any value you want. It just needs to be the same value or so you won't get those nice clean lines you'll get a very strange um like whatever that is you know it looks like camo it looks like camouflage which again doesn't look bad but if you want those lines again make sure you are on the same value as whatever the one up here above it is so that's something to keep in note keep in mind and then also the last thing i want to do is the animation of course which is the coolest part of it because you know who doesn't want to animate things um uh if you go to the x value of the mapping node the, the mapping node in the bottom here and you want to change this you want to go oh let me slide it around like it's santa claus going down a chimney you know just hover your cursor over top of the x value and then hit i to insert a keyframe go to your last frame or whatever the final frame of you want the animation to be and then change it to a, a a smaller value if you go too high it'll go too fast you can play around with it i did three three was really good for me i have 500 frames in my scene and my frame rate is set to 60 frames per second if you set something lower it'll be slower obviously um, but i set it to three hovered my cursor over top of the x hit i on my keyboard and then i did the same thing um, up here same exact thing um, but with this mapping node and texture as well so the first frame have that set to zero hit hover my cursor over x hit i on my keyboard go to the last frame um, and change the value to six hover my cursor hit i and then boom we're in business now this is going to play very strangely initially because what you need to do is you need to go to the graph editor and change this from uh change this uh, interpolation mode from um from linear sorry from bezier to linear so initially it played like this it slowed down and then it gets like to a super fast speed here and then it slows down at the end it looks kind of strange so to have a nice consistent um a consistent flow of the animation um just go here to the graph editor um and then double click uh double tap a until everything's selected in orange right click and change the interpolation mode from bezier to linear and now um it will be a full consistent speed throughout the entire animation now finally just for anyone that might be a super super beginner and needs to know if you put your cursor up in the top left or the top uh, the, the bottom left or the you know anywhere on the edge of your screen when it turns into a little plus like that if you click and drag your screen you can split the window into two just in case you need to know that i don't want to leave one, i don't want to leave one out of course um and then just hit this little button and change the shader editor that's how we get to the shader editor here so um i should have said that at the end of the video but in case you didn't know now you know there you go um hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed it like i said head to the uh head to uh, blue walks channel check out the original video like i said he has some great stuff on there some some really really cool um uh, hand painted like buildings like stylized medieval art stuff it looks really cool so go check it out hope you guys enjoyed today's uh, video i will see you in the next one but until then bye bye